So we had, we actually had a leak from a hurricane. We live on the coast and there was a big spot on it, but it was Welcome to the Handy Women YouTube channel. I am your host, Geraldine Anello. Uh, I am the founder of the Handy Women community on Facebook. You can join it if you look at the click below. Uh, and here on the channel, we're here to empower women with tools, how to do their own handiwork and actual tools. Oh, yeah. So today, to help me out, we're going to talk about making a new ceiling. And I'm here with Heather and her daughters, Sayla and Nora. Hi, guys. Hi. Hey, how are you guys doing? Good. We're good. Good. I'm so excited to have you guys because I always love seeing mothers and daughters working as a team. And I already see a little bit of a preview of that ceiling you worked on. What made you want to redo a whole ceiling? Let's see. Mm -hmm. So we had, we actually had a leak from a hurricane. We live on the coast and there was a big spot on it, but it was also popcorn ceiling. And over the years, the moisture had made the popcorn buckle. So even if we scraped it, it wouldn't look, it wouldn't look nice. It needed to be completely redone. And sheetrock was a little bit out of the budget. So we decided just to cover it with something that looks similar to ship laps, just um, wood planks. What coast are you on? Um, we're Atlantic Beach. Ooh, love it. So you basically decided instead of replacing the popcorn just to hide it. it did I understand that right? <laughs> yeah, so it's not an active leak. It's dry. It was just like from the hurricane, it just made a water spot, spot and the, the roof's been replaced and everything. So yeah, we decided instead of trying to like scrape the popcorn off um, or paint the popcorn or scrape it off and like make a smooth ceiling that we liked the look of this better and it was less expensive. That's so interesting because for me, as soon as I see watermark, I'm, I'm always so scared that it's going to turn into a bigger problem than my, my first thought as a non like good handy woman, like people are in the community would be, oh, if there's a water sign, I should absolutely remove it as soon as possible. But I didn't know you could just actually, it's just cosmetic. Yeah. So the roof, the, once you've replaced the roof and stopped the leak, it wasn't a, like a long term or it didn't say wet consistently. It was just wet for a very short period of time and, and we had it dried out. So there's no like mold or mildew. That would be a totally different issue. You, you would have to remove it. But in our case, it was definitely safe just to, um, if there was concern, you could always prime it or like seal it, but there wasn't any concern. So we were able just to, to put this over top of it. And prime and seal would probably be a lot easier than redoing the whole thing too, right? Yeah, except for we weren't happy with the way it looked to begin with because it's kind of been, it's buckled from, not from that hurricane, but it's been buckled for years because it's old. And um, just like, because we live at the beach, there's a lot of moisture here. It's like the humidity here is crazy. So the ceiling just had already kind of like rippled. So it just wasn't pretty anymore. Oh, the ceiling was trying to be like the ocean. Yeah. <laughs> It was like, I want to be like the ocean. I see. All right. So, okay. You make this decision now that you're going to cover up the popcorn. What comes next? Um, well, we were trying, we had to decide what kind of wood to use. And we wanted to do something that was lightweight and um, easy for us to do ourselves. So we had actually done, we did one other room in like a birch plywood. Um, but the price of that had tripled because the prices of wood have tripled here. And so we weren't feeling like that was the best option now. So we decided to do a five millimeter underlayment, um, which is also found near the plywood in the store. And it was only like $15 a sheet. So we cut it in three inch strips and then um, we just staggered it as we put it on the ceiling and we could have glued it, but because it's so lightweight, like we know it's not going to go anywhere. So we just nailed it with um, a brad nailer, 18 so millimeter. So was the lightweight decision, not just for visuals, but also just for the ease of use and putting it up and everything? Yeah, because when you hold your arms up that long, your arms get tired. <laughs> so when it's lightweight, it makes it easier to put up. And then it's also less likely to come down because it doesn't have the weight pulling it down. Ah, interesting. So it's actually also a safety issue, right? Well, I think just more of, so we don't have to like, if it was really heavy, it might would, um, it might would wave again or buckle more because of the humidity at some point, just because we live in such a humid area that it just, we thought that it would stay up better. Um, wow, so nothing is safe from the moisture. <laughs> yeah, no, it's pretty crazy here, yeah. <laughs> and, for wood. and so how much space did you leave between the popcorn ceiling, the original ceiling, and this, this the wood? It's just flat up against it. We just held it flat up against it and nailed it in. Oh, I would have thought but, that it would be space so that if the popcorn is moving, 
it would move in that space, but I guess you don't need to do that. Yeah. So actually there is the corner you're looking at, there is a tiny, you can actually see because of the, um, underlayment is flexible you can actually see just a slight curve but it's not enough that like i mean now all of you know because i told you but i don't think that no like when people walk in here and the room's done like you can't you don't notice it at all unless you get on the other side of the room and look really closely for it it's not noticeable so that would be a concern if it was buckled like it wasn't it was wavy just enough that it bothered me but not wavy enough that when people walked in here they're like oh your ceiling's wavy but i just felt like if I, yeah i felt like if i scraped it it would be more obvious um so I don't know. It's like, yeah, there's one little spot where you can kind of tell now if you look close, but you can't really, you can't really tell. So. Did you cut them yourself? So actually the three inch planks, a friend of ours cut on a table saw because I do not own a table saw. So I have a really hard time cutting straight lines. We do sometimes like take a two by four and clamp it down on two ends to something so we can cut our circular saw along that. But that's something we don't have. So a friend cut them for us. Um, and so that's, and it, that's a good friend because that would have been a good friend even just by letting you borrow the table saw but this friend like takes it to the next level yeah he's really cool he's a local carpenter he builds all kinds of stuff locally he's a really cool guy and we we used to i painted furniture for a long time and he had a, um we had a booth in the same store so we become good friends so he cut that and then we she i think you did most of the sanding of the edges because once we cut it, I want to hear about that. So like, can you tell me about how you did that and how cool you felt while doing it? Mm -hmm. uh, so we, we had this big stack in our barn. And then so you just take up a big stack. They are kind of heavy when they're all stacked up like that. And they're so long. And I just take them over to our table and you got to make sure there's not a sticker on one side because sometimes there's a sticker. For some reason, I have to put a sticker on every single board <laughs> but and then so you just sand the edges and the top and if they're not that splintery you don't have to sand them as much but if they're really splintery you got to sand all, like the whole entire thing really well right, so now tell for the other girls that are watching is it hard to do is it easy to do is it fun what is it like uh it's really easy and like your hands do get tired at some point. So uh, for the first, maybe like five boards is kind of fun. But then once you get later on, it's not as fun. And then what do you do? Do you take a break and then you get back to it? Or do you just work through the pain and you're like, that's okay, I'll get proud of myself at the end when I'm done? Uh, I usually just take a break. I'll do like 12 boards and take a break and go back and do more. 12 boards. So that's already a lot more than when your hand starts getting tired, right? Yeah. How do you know that it's done? How, what, what, do, what are you looking for to make sure it's sanded the right way? As long as there's not like splinters sticking out of the side and it's like pretty smooth, like you can feel it and it's smooth, and you won't get a splinter in your hand or anything, it's, it's good. That's awesome. Well, congrats on doing that. I love that. Now, what, did you, did you guys paint it yourself then? So it came cut, you sanded it, and then you painted it? Yeah, both girls do a lot of painting. So, Nora, do you want to tell her about painting? Uh, what kind I, did you use a brush or a roller? We use a roller for the ceiling boards, and we practically used a roller for everything, but some spots we used a brush. What spots did you, you need to use the brush for? Um, like where we had nail holes? Like where we had nail holes and spots, I guess, that for the color of the wall. Which one do you prefer to use most? The brush or the roller? The roller. Why is that? Because it's way easier. <laughs> it's way easier. So you no, just go I like this with it. Instead of having to go back and forth, you can just go up and down. And so do you do one side first, then you wait until it dry, and then you do the other side, or you do everything? Um, we usually do um one side of like like the top and then one side of the board and then the next layer we do the bottom and then the other side and we do on about the, on the ceiling boards we just didn't we didn't do the back at all right yeah on the ceiling boards we didn't do the back at all but on our trim we did the side and then the top and then we did the bottom and the other side now did you prefer it, to do the ceiling boards or the trims um Probably the ceiling boards. Why is that? Because the trim boards, you kind of have to prop up with like your hand or something while you roll. But the ceiling boards, since they're not as 
fat and not as tall, you can kind of just roll them easier. That's awesome. I love that you did that. So much work. So we painted the ceiling boards at this point and the trims. What came next? Then we... Taylor, right, tell. Sure. Um, after that, I think we just we just hung them up, right? We yeah. did. We had put like two coats so you couldn't see the wood, and then we just put them on. How do you do that? Do we use screws or nails? That Brad Miller that you use. Oh, the nail gun. Oh, I thought we were talking about trim. You mean on the roof? Yeah. Oh, we, sorry. We use, was... Yeah, we use nails on the roof and screws with the trim. That's what she's asking me. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> But how do you do it? Do you start in one corner of the room for the ceiling boards and then you work your wedge? You just do one line and then the other line? Is there like a particular order that works better? We, well, we started with measuring the room to see how off, like, you know, no room square to see how far off it was to make sure it wasn't like an inch and a half off or something that would be really obvious when we got to the other end. And then we, um, it was really close. It was only like a quarter of an inch off on one side. So we knew that wouldn't be real noticeable to the eye. So we just started on um, the end that you can see we started on that side and we worked our way across the room and we when we did the other room with the birch wood we measured and we cut all the boards like the exact same length so when you were done it almost looked weaved because we had like one long board and one short board and then on the next row we alternated with where the long board and the short board were and it looks really nice and people love it but it wasn't what i loved i wanted it to look more um i don't know what the word would be but i wanted it just to be like no pattern so this time we started with the short board and then we would use a long board and then we would cut random links and just stick in random links to keep it from um, having a pattern. And we actually, we gap them on purpose because we, we like the look of the gapping and it's easier to correct as you go if you get off a little bit, if there's a little bit of a gap. So do you wanna tell her how we gap it? Yeah, we just use a nickel, we'll hold it up against one board and put the other board beside it. That way it won't like slide. So we call it nickel, yeah, we call it nickel gapping and we just keep a pocket full of nickels as we're going because we drop like 20 every time we get up on the ladder <laughs> and then we just stick more up there and keep going so, so you actually leave them as you go it's once it's done that you take them out no we kind of leave like just that row and then we pull them out and then we do the next row and then pull them out and sometimes it chips the edge a little bit so we just we, we just touched up painted that mm -hmm. and then after we got them up there you want to tell what we do with the nail holes yeah we got what's it called oh, you can get it too um both of them help with the nail holes it's caulk caulk oh i thought we use a, it was we use a tuba caulk instead of like a caulk gun because it's easier to control oh yeah and we just put a little dot of that out there and got a little scraper thing and just scraped it off and then later on mom came back with the roller and rolled it or used a paintbrush well that's a lot of details at that point huh mm -hmm. So say like Nora, were you able to help with the actual installation of the boards or it was too dangerous because it was so up high? Like when you nail the boards up, you helped do that? Yeah, we helped that. I don't know if Nora used the nail gun. But she helped. I didn't use a nail gun, but I helped hold up the boards when mom used it. Did yeah. you get scared because you were up high? No. Not scared. How was using the nail gun? Uh, um, it's kind of fun, like, cause like at first, like the first time I was about to use it, I was kind of scared. I was worried I was going to like miss and like hit somebody with it or something. I don't think I would have, but I was still scared. So, but it, once I did it, it was easy and it was pretty fun. It was pretty fun. What made it the most fun, you think? Uh, like when you shoot it, like it makes like a loud sound and it like jolts back on us. <laughs> it makes it really fun. I love that. And then the Yes. <laughs> What did you say, Heather? Feels powerful. It feels powerful. I love it. Yeah, power tools, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, now, what, now you put all the boards, and now came the trim? Yes. How did you go about doing that? So we, our budget is tight. So we had bought a whole bunch of wood that was actually out of old schools. It was bleachers from gymnasiums at schools, and that's what our floor is. And we actually cut our same friend cut um pieces of put that same wood for us into two inch three inch and four inch strips and then um we took turns 
sanding and my my oldest son who's 13 he helps do that too um because the belt sander is hard for the girls to hold on to sailor's done it right you've done it before too yeah it's just hard for them to hold on to and um i actually have like fibromyalgia and hypothyroidism so i i struggle it makes my back hurt to do it too much so he sands a lot for me but we sanded them and then um the girls painted them i think they painted most of them Mm -hmm. And then we just decided what we wanted the trim to look like. I love craftsmen. I love wood. So anything that like makes you think about it. I love the look of that. So we chose a craftsman type look and um, we just kept, we like looked on Pinterest and picture boards and then just saw one that we liked. So we just kind of made up our own measurements based on how big our wood was. And we used the wood we had and made the trim. Yeah, and all the white, it makes it look very like that beach house type of look, which works with your location so perfectly. Yeah, so their dad is a surfer, and I want this is the master bedroom, and I wanted it to be kind of beachy for him because I knew that that would be relaxing and he would enjoy it. Well, that's so sweet. So then putting up the trim, was that harder than the ceiling boards, or was it about equal as far as difficulty? I, I think the trim's easier. <laughs> We just did these little, I don't know what they're called, these little bitty trim screws. They were kind of expensive, but they make tiny holes, but they're easy to pull back out. So we just put like three per board along the long strips, like along the edge of the ceiling. And then um, only like two per board around the doorways and windows and um, and screwed them in. And then we did the same thing. We Some of it's not painted yet. I don't know if you can see in the, the video, but then we just wood filled it and um, my mom actually has taught me a lot on how to do all this. She like loves to work on houses. So she came and helped me caulk it and make sure that it was level. And then we just painted over the, um, we haven't painted over all of it yet, but painted over some of the wood filler and the um, caulking that she did for me, help me with. Now, I thought caulking was for the bathrooms. What is caulking as far as ceiling is concerned? So I was not gonna, um, I wasn't going to caulk the ceiling, but she was like, it'll look so much better. So she showed me in the doorway where one of the doorways, um, there was like, I don't know if you can see my hand or not, but there was like a, how, like at least a quarter inch, if not half an inch gap where the guy that built our house had, you know, I don't know. I think there's a lot when, the, when you build a house, nothing's level, nothing like turns out, I guess, perfect. So we had to caulk one area for sure. And then once we started caulking and I saw how much it made everything kind of blend together. So when you looked at it, it, didn't look, it looked like a smooth trim instead of like individual pieces of wood. It brought the character out a lot more. Like it just made it look done. And once she showed me that, I was like, oh, so we decided to caulk around. We didn't caulk the, where the blue meets the white, but we caulked white caulk where the white trim boards meet the ceiling board. And it just made it look more finished. So it's more because it's white. If the ceiling had been pink, you wouldn't have caulked it. Well, we caulked this. Yeah. Well, no. I mean, I think along the edges, I would have caulked it because we the boards we put up are um, about an inch wide. Um, so, and the ceiling's not nothing's level. So the ceiling's not completely flat. There was a little bit of gaps. None of them are more than a what maybe an eighth of an inch, but it was still enough that the caulk made a huge difference. I think you still we would have still in this room wanted to caulk it if it had been another color. But it was just super easy to caulk because both colors were white. So that mm -hmm. made it easier. And I chose not to caulk where the ceiling meets the walls because none of the gaps are as big. And it is blue, so it would have taken longer to caulk it because you would have had to make like a really clean line or gone and touched up with paint. And I don't like to make extra work if I don't have to, so we didn't caulk that. <laughs> now that the project is done, is there anything you would do differently knowing now what you didn't then? Um... Yeah, I painted, originally we painted the wood on the ceiling uh, um, a gloss white because that's what we had painted all the trim or had started painting all the trim as we were working in here. And um, it, my husband actually pointed out to me that it showed more of the flaws of the ceiling. You could see that one little area where, where it waves just ever so slightly, you could see it more. And it was kind of reflective. So when you walked in, you noticed it more. Um, because I have some back pain and painting up high like that is uncomfortable. I probably would have left it, but he really wanted to see, you know, if it would be better or really felt it would be better if it was um, a flat paint. So I did end up repainting it flat and it, it made a huge difference. Mm -hmm. So if I started again, it worked out because we kind of, we, well, I shouldn't say it worked out. I had to repaint part of the ceiling, but part of the ceiling wasn't repainted yet from filling in the holes from the nail gun. 
So um, it made a little bit extra work, but not too much because the undercoats just help it actually be white because that covers the wood. And then the last coat was on the ceiling anyway. But I would have saved myself a little bit of time and a little bit of pain if I had started with a flat instead of a um, glossier paint. Well, all the work was worth it because it looks absolutely amazing. So congratulations, Heather, Sayla, and Nora. Congratulations for working and helping your mom like that. That's awesome. Um, if you ever done your ceiling, if you have, write down how it went, what you learned, what you wish you had known, all those things. And also make sure you like and subscribe below. See you on the next video. Bye. Bye.